So we're in the top six. We've qualified for Europe. Now let's see if we can beat both the old firm teams. So yes, welcome into the last episode of the Kelly Boys uh, Season 1 here on the 11am Sports YouTube channel. We finished off the last episode with our last two games uh, before the Premiership split. Uh, we ended up losing both those games. Four games without a win. We finished uh, finished the season off in the league. But since then, we've improved our form just ever so slightly. We started off our post-split fixtures with a, a game away to Dundee United. We went a, a goal up early with Brophy. And then Richard scored one just before half time, 2 0 up at half time. Thought we are cruising, we're doing great. And then Dundee United had a bit of a comeback. Almost immediately after half time, they scored. Richard was another for us, and then a couple from Chalmers to make it 3 0. And Richard's got his third and his, his hat trick goal right at the end of the game. Did we deserve the win? I mean, we had more expected goals. Uh, we didn't have as many shots. They had more of the ball. You make up of what you will, but a 4 3 victory, uh, which is very important in the the run of things. We follow that 4-3 victory up with a one-all draw against Motherwell, who uh, were in third position. Still are in third position. Bit of a spoiler before we go and look at the league table. Happy with the one-all draw against Motherwell. Uh, they're doing well in the league. We probably dominated in terms of expected goals, but uh, nonetheless, one-all draw was good, not a loss. And then this really was a game that I wish I had shown you guys. 5-3 um, we beat Aberdeen. Uh, Burke and Brophy uh, and Richard scoring for us. Brophy getting himself a hat trick. Really, Brophy and Richard as a partnership up front has been really, really good uh, for us in the second half of the season. Richard is someone I'm hoping to bring back again for next year. The way he's been playing, Rogers has been very solid in goal as well for us. Uh, and I must say, it was a joy to watch this game. I wish I had been recording for you guys to see, but really, really a uh, good game. Five three. So that leaves us with, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, there two games for this episode to finish the season. Uh, home to Rangers and then away to Celtic on the last day. Uh, two games against the Old Firm. We have beaten them both before, but let's see if we can do it again. If you look at the league table, you can see that Rangers have actually secured the league title. They're 10 points ahead of Celtic with two games to go. Celtic have confirmed that they'll be in second position because they're 11 points ahead of Motherwell. Motherwell have confirmed that they're going to be in third place because they're 8 points ahead of us. And we've confirmed that we're in fourth because we're 10 points ahead of Dundee United. So it's not very exciting really when you look at that league table in terms of oh, can we move position or not but what is exciting is to see if we can get more wins against the old firm proving that we're able to do it you can see in the statistics that Eamon Brophy is top scorer in the league this season with 23 goals and he'll be looking to add to that against the old firm let's see if we can get to 25 a goal in each of the games would be great at the bottom side of the table it looks like Ross County are going down but there's a chance they might uh, jump ahead of St Mirren depending on results in the next game they've already played uh, 37 games they've just got one left but it looks like Ross County are down and St Mirren are going into that relegation playoff so the team for this first game against Rangers is as follows we've got Danny Rogers in goal Menge and Finlay at centre back has normal and we're going with Millen and Honstrup in full back positions Yaya Toure playing in centre midfield alongside Aaron Tishbola Toure uh, has got a broken arm uh, and he has had it for the last few weeks, but he's just wearing a brace of some kind, some type of arm brace or support, something like that, and he's playing through the games, uh, and I'm fairly happy with how he's been doing with that so far. So though it says he's injured, he is meant to be playing. It's cost us a lot of money, I think, but he's playing anyway, alongside this polar. Uh, Burke and Burrows in the wing. I've been playing Burrows there the last couple of games, and he's been playing okay. And Richards and Brophy up front. So here we go, starting the penultimate game of the season against Rangers. And a highlight early on here. Rangers throw the ball in, it swings in and Burke clears it. He could have taken it out, but he's just thrashed at it. And Rangers have got the ball back here with Kamara on the left-hand side into Ryan Kent. So switches the ball, but Burrows intercepts. It goes to this boy, King, number 61. Is that a youth prospect? Rangers fans, let me know in the comments below. Tavernier down the right-hand side into Hadji, and it's been disallowed for offside. Yes, there must have been a striker in the way of that there. Tavernier swings the ball over into Hadji, and yes, he's interfering with the goalkeeper there. Still nil-nil. 
Another highlight here of Ryan Kent with a free kick. He swings the ball in. It's cleared by Menge. King plays the ball out to Kent. There's no one that within any distance at all. Ten yards of him there and somehow he doesn't score. And possibly we have our first highlight of the game. Oof, a good save from the goalkeeper. It was swung across from Brophy in for Richards. See, I'm saying Richards instead of Rogers. I've got it. Another highlight here. Ross Millen throws into Chris Burke. Back to Millen. Yaya Turi swings the ball in. It's cleared by Tavernier. And it could be a breakaway for Rangers here. They've got the numbers. Hadji cuts in field, plays it through to Morelos. And it's a goal. His 25th goal of the season. Competing with Eamon Brophy for the golden boot there. Uh, Eamon Brophy has, uh, what, 23 in the league, I think. I think Morelos is on 20. And another one for his tally here. Yeah, you can see a nice wee finish there for Morelos. Maybe Roger should have saved that, really, but 1-0 Rangers. Hadji plays the ball over to Aribo here. Tavernier on the right-hand side. Cuts down the line. It looks like there's a foul. No, not quite. It goes to Kamara, who hits off the bar. Goodness me, there was a lot going on there. We've got to half time and we're just 1-0 down against the Rangers here. Uh, not been too bad a performance from us so far. I'd like to have had a goal, but we'll see what the second half holds. The team seems motivated with that team talk. Let's get stuck in here. And we have the ball on the right-hand side. Ross Millen. Oh, no, we don't have the ball. It goes straight back to Rangers. Morelos with the ball. He plays it into Kamara. I thought there was a breakaway there, but not quite. They're going to have some slow build-up play instead. And Morelos collects the ball. Kamara. Millen intercepts it. Richards. Maybe it is our highlight. Burke back into Richards. Brophy's in the middle if he needs him, but he doesn't go for him. And instead, he tries to hit it, and it's cleared by Tavernier. Tavernier with a throw-in for Rangers into Hadji. Finds Tavernier again. Swings it in, it's cleared by Finley, but straight to Tavernier again and put in towards the back post. Barisic here cuts the ball in and, oh, how is Ri uh, has Rogers saved that? Surely that should have been a finish from Morelos, but unfortunately for Rangers it was not. Here's a corner kick, though, it's cleared by Menge. Making a couple of changes here, about nearly an hour into the game. McGowan coming on for Millen at right back, Sibbled on for Toure in the middle of the park and Sam Greenwood coming on for Harrison Burrows on the left wing. A chance here, a corner ball in from Burke. It's headed by Tishbul, and I think that might be our first goal from a corner all season. And it's in the last, or the second to last game of the season. Chris Burke with a cracking ball in, and Tishbula wins it. And him, McLaughlin should probably be saving that, but nonetheless, well, that's one all. Another corner here, Burke swings it in, but it's headed out by Rebo. Can he get the ball back in the box? Burke does into Tishbula, who flicks it on, and that was nearly two headed goals for Tishbula in the space of five minutes. The ball's played forward. Oh, goodness me, I thought the highlight was over. But no, Mengi got the ball, flicked it forward. And Rodel Richards with his 12th goal of the season, which is not bad since he only came here in January. See there, I thought the highlight was over. And McLaughlin clears the ball and it goes straight to Mengi, who takes one touch, flicks it over the top of the defenders. They're just not moving anywhere. And Richards slots that into the bottom corner. 2-1-2 two, two, come on. Look. Highlight here, Ryan Kent receives a throw. He plays it into Ryan Jack. He passes it back to Goldson. Goldson plays it forward to Morelos. Morelos is challenged by Finlay, but it goes through to Rogers and Burke collects it. He switches it to Greenwood, but it's intercepted. Arebo with the ball now. Jack Tavernier bombs down the line, swings the ball into the back post, and Ryan Kent scores his 12th of the season. 2 all. Game on. Rangers with another highlight here. The ball swung in. McGowan clears it. Richards with the ball now. Sibbled into Richards. Finlay out to Greenwood. Greenwood with the ball, running forward with it. He's got the overlap from Hornstrup. He plays it into him. Brophy collects it. Back to Sibbled. Sibbled, will he hit it? No, he plays it into Dicker, who's now come on for Aaron Tishbola, as well as Mackenzie coming on for Burke. But it's a breakaway here for Rangers. Jones with the ball, and it's well saved by Rogers. Five minutes of added time. Goodness me, and here is a highlight. McGowan plays it forward. Does Mackenzie win the ball? He does. Can he thread it through? It's intercepted by Goldson. And there's a chance now for Rangers with just three minutes of added time left. And Jones has the ball and he's skinned the goalkeeper and scored his first goal of the season. The ex kilmarnock man scoring a goal to dash the hopes of his former team here. Goldson gets the ball back from Aribo. He plays it into Adji who switches the ball. Perhaps Finley could have intercepted, but Jones get the ball. Rogers has probably got to do better than that attempt at saving the ball. But nonetheless, 3-2 to Rangers. We get to see this highlight again, but it's nowhere near offside. I didn't need to see this FM. Come on. Time's ticking away now, and it is full time, and Rangers win the game 3-2. We didn't beat that side of the old farm, but maybe we can beat the other one in the last game of the season. 
We'll see you for the next game against Celtic. <sighs> Guys, I- I'll be honest. I just played the last game of the season against Celtic and forgot to hit the record button. Yeah, I know. Stupid. But instead, what I'll do is I'll play the highlights and talk over them. Uh, I'll, spoilers, you didn't really miss much. Unless you like goals. In which case you did. So here was the first effort. We have Johnson down the right hand uh, sorry, left hand side. He gets past Millen too easily. The ball bounces off the post and Griffiths finishes for his first goal of the game for Celtic there. And that's 1 0 to Celtic after 26 minutes. That was followed up by Danny Rogers, who kicks the ball forward. It's flicked on by Burrows. And Eamon Brophy finishes in the far corner. 1-1 one, one just before half time. Just after half time, Celtic get the ball. Play about in the left hand side here with Taylor and Brown. Uh Johnson plays it into Griffiths, who finishes with a cracking finish uh, into the corner of the goal. Rogers got a touch, but not enough to keep it out. And then we got a corner kick and for the second time in two games, a goal from a corner, Richards from Burke's corner. And I was just saying how amazing it was that we scored two from corners and then Celtic go up the other end and score one of their own and go up 3-2 with a quarter of the game to go. They then get a penalty and Ross Turnbull finishes it in the bottom corner of the goal to go up 4-2. We make some changes and it didn't really work because we get Johnson on the left-hand side again who plays the ball infield. Uh, Turnbull gets it, slides it into Klamala and that is how the game finished. Five goals to two for Celtic. So yes, uh, sorry once again for that little piece of idiocy. Um, I'll try not to let it happen again, but I can't promise. I'm not particularly intellectual. But here we can see a bit of a season summary for us. Um, Scottish Premiership. We've played our 38 games, 59 points. I'm more than happy with that. Finishing fourth was above what our expectation was. The 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 board were looking for mid-table and eventually getting top half in a couple of seasons' time. We've got a top half finish. We've got Europe as more than... The board really have asked for it. You can see Eamon Brophy with 24 goals in the league and average rating of 7.08. In the Scottish Cup, we were unfortunately knocked out in the fourth round by Dungeon United in the Betfred Cup, knocked out in the group stage. But we are in Europe for next year, which is not something I would ever expect to be seeing here as Kilmarnock manager. If we look at our squad here, we'll see the players that have played most of the games for us. We've got Danny Rogers, Mengi and Finlay. No surprises there with the most appearances for us, and that's followed by Eamon Brophy, uh, there with 38 starts, Craig Sibbald, who's played a surprisingly high number of games, remember he started at left mid, when we played a flat four, and then played a lot of games in the middle of the park, we've had a lot of rotation around that, but most players, even if they've only started 20 games, they've certainly been coming off the bench, for teams worth of games, so um, a lot of rotation, this squad I think was fairly well used, uh, so far, this year. In terms of average rating, you see Rodell Richards, no surprises there when he's got 13 goals and his 16 appearances for us with the highest average rating. Eamon Brophy as well with his 29 total goals. Uh, Rodgers, Finlay and Menge, the other players. Hence, I was never going to change those three around. They did really, really well for us. In terms of goals, you can see there was a bit of a struggle. Brophy and then Richards eventually in the second half of the season joined him scoring goals, but really nobody else was doing that. Rory McKenzie, uh, with with the, the next highest with five. And in terms of assists, uh, Brandon Houndstrup on the left-hand side, which appears to be where a lot of our goals are coming from, that left-hand side. Uh, Brophy with some assists as well. And then the other full-backs, mainly doing a lot of the, the, the assists, you know, with Millen and McGowan uh, in there, which uh, suggests the wing play tactic that we ended up playing the second half of the season was making a big difference there. So yes, that does it here for Season 1 of the Kelly Boys on Football Manager 2021. I hope you've enjoyed Season 1. We've got Season 2 coming up tomorrow. And firstly, we're going to start with a weekend of transfer special. I say transfer special. Are we going to make any transfers? We're now in the Europa League. So maybe we can bring in some bigger names. Certainly this season we didn't have any money to spend, but hopefully we'll have some money this time round. So we'll see you tomorrow for that transfer special at the start of Season 2 of the Kelly Boys. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye.